Hi, I am Chandrasekhar Gupta and we are discussing programming concepts. Today, let's try to talk about sorting. We are not going to discuss each and every detail about sorting. We will try to look at some of the important sorting algorithms and a brief overview about all of this. Before diving further, I want you to introduce two terms. First is in-place sorting algorithms and then we are having stable sorting algorithms. In-place sorting algorithms are the algorithms which do not use any extra space while you are trying to perform the algorithm. But out-of-place algorithms actually tend to use some extra memory other than the input that you have provided. Then what are stable sorting algorithms? In the case of stable sorting algorithms, the input will actually be returned in the same way even if that is the way to do so. That means if you are trying to sort an array in an ascending order, and in the input you are having two elements of the same size or of the same number 3 and 3. If you try to sort this array then if they are returned in the same order they are called as a stable sorting algorithm or if the order is changed or if they are misplaced then it is called unstable sorting algorithm. Let's try to understand selection sort. Suppose if we have this array selection sort actually looks for minimum element of all the existing elements. Of this entire array, it will actually find the minimum element and here the minimum element is 1. So, 1 will be replaced at the initial index and both of the elements will be swapped. Similarly, it repeats the process and searches for the next minimum element which is 2 in this case. The process repeats and 2 will be replaced at the first index. In the same process, the entire array will be sorted. So, the final call on the array will be this. The procedure that is followed was initially we will be having a pointer let us call it i and we will be having one more pointer which will be pointing to the next position of it and it scans for the value at both of these indexes if it if the value at j is greater than the value of i then nothing happens or else it moves further if it is less than both of these positions will be swapped in this way j will be moving till the end of the array and in the next iteration as the minimum element has been moved to the first or zeroth index in this case the i will be moved to this location and j will start from the respective position. The process repeats and it completely sorts the array. If we just observe as we have discussed this falls under the category of in place sorting. It does not require any extra space and the complexity is order of n square as for each and every element the other element are being crossed completely once. It is also the stable sorting algorithm. Let us try to understand bubble sorting algorithm. The name bubble sort came to bubble sorting algorithm because the element that has to be in the top position starts as a bubble and reaches out to the final or its destination. If we just observe, if we have a water in a bucket, if the bubble will be generated at the bottom and it will be propagated to the top of the surface. Similarly, in this array, the element that has to move forward or if it is greater than it will move in the right direction and at the end of the complete iteration, how the bubble has floated at the top of the surface, the topmost element will move to the final position. Let us see how it happens. Both of these elements will be compared, 7 is greater than 1. So, it will be swapped and it will be moved further. The comparison at the second position is over. Now, the comparison moves to the third position. Both of this will be compared. They have to be interchanged. And finally, comparison happens at this place and both of them will be interchanged. If we just observe, 8 is the largest element in this array and at the end of the first iteration, 8 has moved towards its respective position. In a similar way, how bubble has moved to the top, 8 has moved or floated through the entire array and it has moved to the final position. If we just repeat the process, 1 and 7 are in respective positions, 7 and 2 needs to be exchanged. So, this happens. We have finished the comparison at second position. Now, the comparison at third position happens. 7 and 5, both of them needs to be exchanged. 7 and 8 are good to go. Now, at the end of the second iteration, we have 7 at the end of the array and 7 was in its correct position. This is how bubble sort happens and if you observe at the complexity, the complexity of bubble sort is order of n square. We can optimize bubble sort if the array is already sorted. Suppose there are some of the cases where we get sorted array as such for input. If you want to sort this array, we will be comparing these two positions and then we will be comparing the next position, the next position and the final position. If you just observe, swapping has not taken place at any position of the array. When the swapping has not taken place at any position, then it indicates that array is already sorted. We can actually keep a variable, let us say bubble, 
initially we set it to 0. If the swapping happens, we will change the value to 1. At the end of one iteration, when the index move from the 0th position to the last index, we can check the value of bubble. If it is 0, then swapping has not occurred and the array is sorted, we can abort the algorithm. In this case, the complexity falls down drastically to order of n. So, bubble sort is having the best case complexity of order of n and in some of the cases, the complexity turns out to be order of n square. It is also in place sorting algorithm as we do not require any extra space. It is also called as a stable sorting algorithm. Let's try to understand merge sort. Consider this array. In the case of merge sort, we will divide the array into equal halves. This will be divided till this part. It will be further divided and the division continues till we have one element in each and every subarray. Now, both of these elements are combined in the actual order. They will be combined 38 and then 45. This will be as such. Both of these will be combined in the order 7 and 15 and 9. This combination will actually lead to the entire array and it has to be completely sorted. The process of combining two arrays by sorting them is called merging. Let's try to take an example and try to understand how merging works. Let's consider this as L1 and consider this as an L2. We need to find an array by merging both of them. Let's make a pointer to L1 and call it i. We'll make another pointer to L2 and let's call it j. We have to find a list which has the size of L1 plus L2 and we need to merge both of them. You need to understand whenever this list was created by merging, all of this will already be sorted. So, when I try to create a new list by merging both of them, even this has to be sorted. Let's name the pointer here to be k. Initially, we will compare the element of L1 and L2 with the help of this indexes L1 of i, L2 of j respectively. 5 and 15 are compared, 5 is less, so we will increment k, 5 will be copied over here and i will be incremented. Now, again L1 of i and L2 of j will be compared. If you see, 15 is less than 23, so 15 will be copied by incrementing the value of k and the value of j will be incremented this time. 23 and 37 has to be compared, 23 is less, 23 will be copied after incrementing the value of k and i value will be incremented. Now, 97 and 37. 37 will be written after incrementing the value of k and it will be moved to 62. Again, k will be incremented. 62 will be written as it is less than 97 and as we have copied the element over here, it will be pointing to the last element. We need to add infinity to each and every list when we are trying to merge it. Infinity is nothing but any maximum number. Let's say it can be 9999 and so on. Now, both of this will be compared. And because of the presence of this infinity, we will ensure the copying of this complete list. So, even k will be incremented, 97 will be written and whenever the complete size of L1 and L2 is finished or whenever the k has reached the last index in this array, we will complete the sorting algorithm and this happens in merge sort. Let's try to analyze its complexity. In the case of merge sort, if you see the task required for n numbers is dividing into task required for n by 2 numbers and we are having two subarrays of search. So, task required for n is equal to 2 times task required for n by 2 and we have to merge at each and every stage. So, the work happening at each and every stage can be order of n or theta of n. If we solve this by master's algorithm, then the complexity turns out to be theta of n log n. If we just observe, we are trying to take a big problem and we are dividing it into sub parts and we are trying to find the solution for small parts and we are combining it. We are dividing it and we are trying to conquer it at a smaller stage and finally we are trying to solve the entire problem. So, the paradigm which is used for merge sort is divide and conquer. It is also a stable algorithm. If we just observe, it is out of place sorting algorithm because if you remember, while we are merging at each and every stage, suppose if I am merging 45 and 38, I need to create a separate list for 45 and 38, which are followed by infinity. So, these are the extra space other than the input, which I have been using for the completion of the algorithm. As I am using some extra memory, this is called as out of place sorting algorithm. We will try to look at one final algorithm, which is quicksort. Consider quicksort. 
Suppose this is the array which was given to us. Quick sort is actually having a pivot element. Pivot element can be taken as the last element, the first element, the middle element, the median, anything or any random element can be pivot element. In this case, let's try to take the last element as pivot element. I'll try to call it as x and I'll be having a pointer which is called low and I'll be having another pointer which is having high. Low pointer will actually keep all the elements which are lower than the pivot element at a particular instance and if a particular element is higher than the pivot element from the right we will be having those elements after the high pointer. Let's try to see how quicksort works on this array. Initially we are having low pointer and high pointer as we have discussed. High pointer will be incremented and will be pointing to this point. 30 is greater than 10. So the required element is higher than this element. This will be left as such and high pointer will be incremented. 20 is greater than 10. Again high pointer will be incremented. 50 is greater than 10. Again high pointer will be incremented. 70 is greater than 10, high pointer will be incremented, 80 is also greater than 10. Now finally it has almost reached the pivot. In this case, all these elements which are on the left of the low pointer are less than this. So the correct position of this pivot element is next to this low pointer. The low pointer is at minus 1 and the correct position of pivot element is 0. This has to move to the first position. Now the array turns 10. 20, 50, 70, 80 and as both of them are swapped, 30 comes to the last. Again, if we try to repeat this approach, low pointer is initially at minus 1, high pointer is also initially at minus 1, pivot is at the last position, high pointer will be incremented, 10 and 30 will be compared. If you just observe, 10 is less than 30. So, we have found an element which is less than pivot element. We will try to increment the low pointer and we will try to exchange both of them. In this case, both high and low are at the same point, even though we will try to swap the values at this high pointer and low pointer. Again, we will try to increment the high pointer. If we just observe, 20 is still less than 30, that means we have found another element which is less than the pivot element. So, we will increment the low pointer and we will exchange with this. Basically, we are looking for the numbers which are less than the pivot element. And whatever number that we have seen, we will try to keep track of them with the help of this low pointer. And once all the elements which are less than this are arranged to the left of low pointer, we will try to take this element and will place it in the position of low plus 1, which is actually the correct position of the pivot element. In this case, we are trying to solve each and every number till the entire array is sorted. This is the approach of quick sort and taking an element and putting it in its correct position. This approach is called partition. By default, quicksort is a not stable algorithm, but it happens in place. It is not actually using any extra memory other than the input that we have provided. If we try to analyze the time complexity, it will take order of n square in the worst case. The worst case actually happens when the array is completely sorted or when all the elements are equal. It happens because it requires all the comparisons in both of these cases. You try to take an ascending order array or descending order array and try to solve in this approach and you will find that it tend to behave more worse than in the normal case. So the complexity in this case turns out to be order of n square. But in all the other cases, the complexity turns out to be order of n log n. This also uses divide and conquer because we are trying to take a particular element and then we are trying to place it in its correct position and we are repeating the same approach for the entire array. This is how quick sort is solved. Now we have seen the basic concept of the most important sorting algorithms. If you want to read about them in detail, you can go check them out in Geeks for Geeks or any other web.